on Fox News Sunday. And hello again from Fox News in Washington. President Obama tried to deal with a growing uproar over government surveillance Friday, looking to strike a new balance between national security and civil liberties. We've invited two men at the center of the debate to discuss what the president did and didn't do. General Michael Hayden is former head of the NSA and then the CIA, charged with gathering intelligence to keep the country safe. Democrat Patrick Leahy is chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee and has already introduced legislation to cut back even more on government surveillance. Gentlemen, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good morning. Uh, let's start with the big picture. General Hayden, what do you think of the president's reforms that he announced Friday? Does he compromise this nation's security? Yeah. Chris, there's an awful lot to like about the speech. That first third is the most robust defense of why we conduct intelligence and how we conduct intelligence that the president has made since he's been in office. If he had been giving that speech for the last six months, I'm not so sure he would have had to have made the speech at the Department of Justice. Now, when you get into the substance, what he changed, I think there's a clear pattern with both the domestic and the foreign piece. He's going to cut back on some capacities. He hopes at the margins, cutting it into agility a bit, putting administrative burdens on, that could be risky. But it looks like he's willing to accept that risk in order to fundamentally preserve the programs. All right. I'm, we're going to get into the detail in a moment, but let me get big picture from you, Senator Leahy. Does the president go far enough in protecting Americans' privacy? Well, I think he is trying to protect Americans. And you always have that balance between the privacy and our protection. The concern that many have had, and this is united Republicans and, and Democrats across the political spectrum in the House and the Senate, is we've gone too much into Americans' privacy. Uh, and we've also reached a point of, if we collect everything, do we have anything? As we found in the past, sometimes we have so much stuff, we, we don't go through it. Uh, he has laid out a framework of the things he might do. There's still going to be legislation on this. For example, Attorney General Holder is, is coming to, uh, before the Senate Judiciary Committee on January 29th, uh, the day after the President's State of the Union message. We are going to ask him a lot of questions because a lot of it was said that between what he and the head of uh, national intelligence have to work out, uh, there's going to be a lot of questions, again, from both Republicans and Democrats who are concerned that we're going too much in the privacy of Americans. Okay. Let's get into some detail. I, I think it's fair to say the biggest debate is over the collection of metadata, the, the records of billions of American phone calls, not the content, but the fact that my number called your number, how long the call lasted. Uh, here's what the president said about this on Friday. I believe we need a new approach. I am therefore ordering a transition that will end the Section 215 bulk metadata program as it currently exists and establish a mechanism that preserves the capabilities we need without the government holding this bulk metadata. The president wants the NSA to get court approval before it can search the database. He wants someone other than the government to hold the records and to pursue calls only two steps removed from a suspected number instead of the current three steps removed. General Hayden, given the fact that the current NSA director, uh, Keith Alexander, says that this bulk collection of metadata has only prevented one or two plots at the most, can't you live with those restrictions? Well, it appears they're going to have to live with those restrictions, Chris, but let's, let's take them one at a time. Two versus three hops. Now, look, when you get out to the third hop, uh, very often... And, and basically, let me just quickly explain. Yeah. What that means is they identify that there's a bad number they, currently, they can say, well, okay, this number called that number, called that number, called that number. Three hops. Now it would be only two hops. Now, look, if, if the third hop weren't useful from time to time, we wouldn't have been doing it in the first place. But by the time you get out there, you really pretty much discover everybody has a dentist and everybody orders pizza. <laughs> all right? And so there's an impact, but it's marginal. I'm a little more concerned about going to the court every time you want to query the data. As you said, Chris, they've got the data in the big database, and then they have what's called a seed number. That's almost always a foreign number. You get a cell phone from a safe house in Yemen, and you want to ask that database, has that seed number, that bad number you now have, 
ever been in contact with numbers here in the United States? And, and, and the standard is, do you have a reasonable, articulable suspicion that that seed number is Al-Qaeda related? That's a professional intelligence judgment. I don't know what role the court has in adding value. And you know Judge Banks, former head of the FISA court, in a letter to Congress, specifically said that. Let me, Senator Lamy, let, let me pick up with you, because in your legislation, the USA Freedom Act, you are calling for an end to the bulk collection of this metadata. Are you going to fight the president on this? No, I think we have a way that we, we could do this, but uh, it's not a question of fighting the, the president. The question is, what is Congress going to do on this? I think that there, there's been too much leeway. As you know, the, uh, the FISA court, for example, is very critical back a few years ago. The abuses of uh, of the procedures we had to collect data and asked them to clamp down. Uh, I worry because we we just seen what happened, for example, with the Snowden thing. Uh, there was so much stuff stolen, we still don't even know everything that was stolen. And that worries you. They have your telephone calls, General Hayden's telephone calls, my telephone calls. Where is all this going? Uh, I'd rather have some somebody overseeing where where you get it now on the question of an emergency the president made very clear an emergency they'd go in and they would go to the court afterward uh, i just think that there should be an oversight think back in the history of this country j edgar hoover's day and all if they had, if he had had the power when he was spying on protesters and those against the vietnam war and martin luther king if he'd had the power that's in here think what might have happened I mean, we Americans believe in our safety. We also believe in our ability to, uh, to be private. I mean, I was, I was a prosecutor for eight years. I believe in going after the bad guys. And I realize this is an entirely different level of the bad guys that I went after. But you still have to have some checks and balances before you have a government that can run amok. Okay, let me, let me go to another subject. Because perhaps... The most controversial reform that the president announced Friday is to extend privacy rights to foreigners. Here's what the president had to say about that. People around the world, regardless of their nationality, should know that the United States is not spying on ordinary people who don't threaten our national security. And that we take their privacy concerns into account in our policies and procedures. Senator Leahy, I can understand, the, because of the diplomatic uproar with Angela Merkel, the idea that we're not going to wiretap uh, or eavesdrop on our allies, someone like the, a foreign leader. Why on earth would we extend our constitutional protections to foreigners, particularly when we know those countries are spying on us? I don't think that's what the president said. Now, as General Hayden and I both know, without going into classified material, we have, as, as people know, uh, we have relationships with all the intelligence services among our allies. We share a great deal of information from them uh, in both directions. I think that a lot of these countries were getting such feedback against the United States, saying, why are they spying on us too? I think the president had to say something like this uh, to know we're, we're being protected. There was a growing and I think erroneous feeling in other countries that somehow the United States was in tapping all of them. And I think this was probably a way of, of uh, helping some of our allies say it's okay for us to cooperate with the United States. Well, let me ask you, General Hayden, is that what this is? Is this a PR move? Uh, the president said he's going that we will continue to survey foreigners when it comes to... PR is your word, not <laughs> right. I understand that. Okay. Uh, Counterintelligence or cybersecurity. Right. Is that what... Is that what this is, basically, that he's, he's saying, we're not going to do things that we weren't doing already? Look, if your definition of a PR move is to restore trust and confidence domestically and abroad, that's exactly what the president's doing. And what he's done here, it's very interesting, Chris, and the president's language was very precise. He did not commit to pulling back on collection against foreign targets other than heads of state and heads of government. What he's talking about is the retention of that data and then how it's disseminated. And that part he does say, we'll, we'll use the same standards we use for American persons. Frankly, that's practice now. But this is one of the things that concerned me. Remember I mentioned administrative burden before. Uh, we do that with great oversight for Americans. And it, it is administratively burdensome. This is probably a tenfold increase in the paperwork requirement. 
we'll see how much the system can stand that. I, I want to make it clear, though, as we wrap this up, I want to move to one <coughs> other subject, that basically there, uh, there's a lot less that the president changes than what he does change. And, and I want to talk about that. The government will still be able to issue national security letters, a broad subpoena power. They will still be able to build back doors into software and hardware of private companies to collect information. Let me get you both briefly to answer this, because the impression I get, and maybe I'm wrong, General, isn't the basic surveillance structure that George W. Bush started after 9-11. Isn't that still intact? Absolutely. And, and I'd add one more item to your list about going after encryption. His commission said we should pull back on that. He never mentioned encryption once in his talk. So in terms of the basic surveillance structure of George W. Bush. Exactly. Of course. No, that's exactly what the president has embraced it. He has got a political problem. And I don't mean to trivialize it because in a democracy, political problems are very serious. He needs consent of the governed. He's willing to shave points off of flexibility, add administrative burdens, add oversight. But the objective, Chris, is to keep on doing what he's doing. Briefly, Senator Leahy, do you agree? I think that we, will, we are going to maintain our ability to protect the United States. That's extremely important. Talk about encryption. We know that there's attacks on the United States all the time from foreign governments, right. uh, as well as others. We saw this attack on Target, uh, which is an enormous problem. Uh, for this country. So we will, we will protect against that. The concern everybody has is allowing our government to have such a reach into your private life, my private life, and everybody else's that uh, we are, we have a government controlling us instead of us controlling the government. And that's what both Republicans and Democrats are joined together on the Hill to try to change. All right. I want to talk about one other subject sure. uh, in the time we have left, and that is that the six-month interim deal between the U.S. and Iran yeah. goes into effect tomorrow. It would limit the Iran's nuclear program in exchange for some easing of some sanctions that the West has put on Iran. General Hayden, should to Congress leave the deal alone, or should they go ahead and pass this legislation which would impose sanctions six months from now if there's not another deal, and actually prescribe what has to be in the final deal? Yeah, Chris, my professional career, I'm a creature of the executive branch. You wanna, you wanna give the executive as much running room as possible when it comes to negotiations like this. And so I think having that congressional action just off stage, just in the wings, might actually be a, po be a powerful negotiating tool. Chris, here's the problem. If this is a nuclear weapon, the Iranians are parked right about here. And the current six month somewhat freezes them there and gives us a bit of transparency. But they're too close. What we've got to do is crank them back. They've got to deconstruct stuff. So you would support the legislation? I, it, I, I, like, I like the threat of additional sanctions hanging out there. Senator Leahy, so far 16 of your Democratic colleagues say that they are going to support imposing new sanctions against Iran. I think, are they missing? I mean, no, are they missing? I think it's a mistake, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, we voted for sanctions, very tough, and I voted for a very tough sanctions on Iran. But right now we have uh, these, uh, we have five, five plus one of the countries we're working with Iran on this. We have people who've joined us on the sanctions. If they look like we're prejudging the negotiations, they're going to say, hey, United States, you're on your own. They're going to start pulling away, and it's going to Briefly, be... Briefly, do, do you agree with the White House that if senators vote for that, they're pushing a march to war? I, I, I think if we do that, we screw up the ability to have real negotiation. If the negotiations fail, if Iran is seen as cheating, we will impose more sanctions in a nanosecond. Both the House and the Senate will. Don't do it prematurely because if you're trying to negotiate something, you don't have a third party, in this case the Congress, coming in involved in that negotiation. Senator Leahy, General Hayden, thank you both very much. Up next, our Sunday